Hey, it's summertime. Kids are out of school. You're going on vacation. But you know what? You've got a nice all-inclusive resort on your farm. Well, at least your bugs and the rodents think so. What do I mean by an all-inclusive resort? Well, think about it. <laughs> These pests and rodents, they got an all-you-can-eat buffet. They got a nice environment, sheltered. It's nice and warm. Uh, it's just a nice little situation. So today, we want to talk about how you can make that not such a nice resort. I want to go through a couple of things. There's many strategies, uh, biological strategies, there's chemical strategies, which we'll hit a little bit, but probably gonna do a follow-up video, get a little more in depth than that, but today mostly we're gonna talk about cultural and environmental strategies that you can take care of. Now, some of these things are not gonna be anything new to some of you, but this video was actually generated because I had a grower who reached out and said, hey, could you do something on rodents and pest control? I don't necessarily know that they were a new grower, but this is, these videos are just to help people. And if you might can get something out of this that helps, then it's been a success. We know that wet spots are a breeding ground for bacteria, but bugs also like to hang out in these wet spots. So if you've got a leaky nipple, you've got some moisture that's starting to get in there, get that out. Um, I mean, all kinds of reasons for ammonia, but the fact is, for even for bugs, they like that wet. Get that wet spot out, deal with it, try to keep your floors as dry as possible. Um, blowing down your houses. Um, when you've got buildup of dust in some corners, there it is, you got a nice little resort, you got a nice little hiding place for the bugs. So get that, get that blown out and clean it as much as you can. Um, you've got nooks and crannies in your foundation in your walls sometimes, older houses. Now, uh, this is a newer house and I, I couldn't find any cracks or openings in the foundations or in the walls because this is a newer house. But you know if you've got older houses even, that you've got the situation. So maybe get some foam insulation like great stuff from Lowe's. Um, there's also a product I just came across. That, uh, it's a lot cheaper. You can buy it in a, in a cylinder with you know, your, your foaming nozzle and things like that. So those are some things. I will put a link on that for this too. Got some debris right here, okay? This is a nice little two bedroom Airbnb. Rats are gonna love it because all I gotta do is just go next door and they got a golden corral smorgasbord of food. So you gotta get them debris up. I know that's common sense, but sometimes, you know, you pass it every day and you just don't think about it. But get debris. Um, a while back I did a kind of make fun video, an April Fool's video, and I talked about how if you know that if you mow around your house, keep your grass mowed, your birds will consume more feed, consume more water, just kind of silly. But the fact is, mowing around your house and keeping it weed-eated is a big help too, because if the grass is high, you've got places where bugs and rodents can hang out and hide and shelter. I mean, that's there's that resort. They got a nice little shelter and they got food and water right where they can go. So there's some things that environmentally, outside and even inside of the house that you can control. There are all types of nuisances. In fact, when we rolled up on this farm today, about 30 minutes ago, uh, the manager was actually eyeing a 300 pound wild pig that was out there on the edge of the pasture. So <laughs> we're not gonna talk about those, but the, probably the number one nuisance in a chicken house, as you know, is darkling beetles. Oh my goodness, and it's not just that they carry diseases like E. coli, Salmonella, Newcastle, other types of things, but you know that a darkling beetle, it has been estimated that a darkling, a severe outbreak of darkling beetles in a house could actually do as much as 25% damage uh, in insulation reduction in a year. So it is costing all kinds of money, those darkling beetles. Plus the fact is it's stressing your birds. I mean, it's irritating them. They won't sit down, they're everywhere. So you want to try to deal with this on things you can deal with. Um, a couple of things that you can. Litter prep early, okay? So why you say that? Well, I know you just sold. You had catch night, two nights in a row, you were up all night. 
walk, monitoring the catch crew, fixing, making sure they don't bust the lines, all kinds of stuff. I get it. But if you can give a little bit more effort in one more day, and many of you do, because you just want to get it out of the way. But the reason from the darkling beetle side is that within about two days, those darkling beetles are going to migrate out of the litter into those cracks and crevices and curtains and the walls and all those different things right there. So if you're going to clean out, you'll be able to get a lot of bugs out at that time. Uh, if you wind row, go ahead and get your wind row. Uh, you can heat it up and kill some of that larva that's in there. So if you can go ahead and get your litter dealt with as soon as possible, you can actually have an impact on your darkling beetles. I'll tell you another one. It's probably the easiest and the cheapest, and that is take advantage of cold weather. So, I don't know if you knew this or not, but below 30 degrees, there is no life stage of the darkling beetle that can survive. The egg, the larva, the beetle, all stages of that darkling beetle's life will be killed. You can kill all three of those stages with below 30 degree weather. Now, some of us down south Georgia, a little bit below us here, you're not going to get too many times where you're going to get be out of chickens and it's 30 degrees. But some of you may have a situation where you could take advantage of in the wintertime. If you're out long enough, you know, it is going to be a little high because you're going to have to winterize those, those pipes and do some winterization a little bit. But if you could get those doors open and you could get it below 30 degrees in that house, you could stop the generational cycle of some darkling beetles. So that's just a thought. But there's some things that you can control and you can deal with. Now, those are your environmental things that you can control. Uh, in the future, we're going to talk about some chemical strategies. Everything from proper application to the correct timing to, you know, proper mixture and things like that. And uh, how to use your rat baits and chemical things like that. So, hope this was a help. If you got any questions or anything we can do for you, give me a call at 1-800-608-3755 or email me, alan at southlandorganics.com. And remember, let's tear those resorts down and get them bugs out of there. Hey, do me a favor. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and even hit that notification bell. And uh, if you've got any suggestions or videos you want to see, shoot me an email.